Alrighty. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Gobrio University's webinar on MIP preparing for the new 1099 NEC. Today, we have Kathy Dwyer, a senior application consultant here at Zobrio, to lead the webinar. If you have any questions, please leave them in the chat, which is located at the bottom of your screen. We will go all over all questions at the end. Thank you, and I'll hand it over to Kathy. Wonderful. Good morning, all, and I apologize for the delay. Our Zoom session was giving us some technical difficulties this morning. Um, I'm coming off a laptop that asked for an update this morning, which I gladly did, and it decided not to play. So um, again, apologize for the delay, and we can get started right away. Um, this this webinar is um, our August Zobrio University, and we chose the subject of 1099s um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one and foremost is um, Community Brands has released a new version of MIP. It's called version 20.2. And amongst some of the changes, that include a lot of security changes, which are going to force you to reset your passwords when you log in. Um, also, um, more pertinent to what we're going to talk about here is um, the 1099 changes that the IRS has dictated for calendar year 2020. Okay. Now, um, what my understanding is, is is the 1099 miscellaneous form is still operational for calendar 2020 with the exception of people or your, your vendors that were coded to box number seven, which is 1099 miscellaneous non-employee compensation. Okay. Um, what the IRS has done is they've done away with this non-employee compensation on the 1099 miscellaneous form and they've replaced it with a form called NEC or non-employee compensation. Um, what we're going to talk about today is what do you do in the MIP software to conform to these changes? Okay. So first and foremost is this. Let me, let me start off by coming up on the maintain and drag us down to vendors. Okay. And I'm just going to take one of my vendors here. I'm in the, the NTO or test database. Um, so if you don't recognize the data, it's, it's the database that is released with MIP when the software is installed. But primarily what happens here is when you're in the vendor file and you come down to your 1099 information tab, okay, um, you'll recognize this screen it, it, in itself. It hasn't changed. Uh, but what has down here on the lower half of the screen where we have a default uh, form type, um, you'll notice that first response in the drop list is this new form type, 1099 NEC, and again, non-employee compensation. And what, what the idea is, is um, we need to manually switch over all your 1099 miscellaneous box 7 folks to this NEC form, and I, I imagine for the most part it's, it's the box 1. Okay. Okay. And that in itself, easy enough to do. Um, it's a little bit of a, uh, a project to identify your vendors and going in here and making the adjustment. Okay. So let me talk a little bit about how do you do that. You know, here, here we have a, a gigantic vendor file. I don't want to look at every vendor that's in the system. Um, can you help me do this switch over? Well, let me go ahead and undo this change for just a second here. Okay, let me close out of your vendor file, um, and I'm going to close again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here under Reports, and I'm going to drag down to the category Accounts Payable, and, um, and, and this is just one recommendation. There's several ways to do this, but I like to come over to the Vendor Information uh, category. And what I do is, is I basically have this report called 1099 information, okay? And quite honestly, what it was is I took the default and 1099 information template, and we know it's a template because it's encompassed with those pointed brackets. And I really, what I did is I just copied it out um, and called it 1099 information, okay? Now, the big thing here is when you create that report, um, it's a good idea to come into the filter. And, and again, what you're interested in is, is um, 
not your entire vendor file, I don't believe. So what I did with the vendor file, um, the vendor filter here is I basically selected issue a 1099, and, and the answer is yes. I, I don't want any non-1099 vendors. Uh, let, let's keep this as succinct as possible. And then secondly, what I selected for a criteria was the default 1099 box number, and what I'm uh, looking for is just the miscellaneous 07 folks. Because okay. keep, keep in mind that the um, 1099 miscellaneous form is not completely defunct. It only is for the non-employee compensation. But if you have folks that have rents or royalties or any other categories on the 1099 miscellaneous form, that, that's going to stay intact. You'll continue to use those. Okay. So the idea here with the filter is, only give me the miscellaneous 07 uh, vendors that I might need to do some work on. Um, I also want to, perhaps on the content tab, I want to make sure I have enough information here on the lower right so that when I run the report, it's useful. Um, and as you can see here, I'm basically just going off a of vendor ID, and um, I did ask for task, tax types and box number, which is a little bit redundant based on the fact that the filter is set. But uh, let, let me just give you an idea here. I'll bring it up on the screen. Okay. So again, very short list to, to kind of illustrate our point, but these four vendors, they are currently set up in our vendor file um, as yes to issue a 1099, and the default box is the miscellaneous 07. Okay. So potentially the, these are the vendors in question that should be uh, manually edited, and, and you know you certainly don't have to sit down and do this all in one session. You you can um, kind of pick away at it between now and the end of the year, calendar year. Uh, but let, let me talk to you just about. Um, it's not enough just simply to change these from a miscellaneous 07 to like an NEC 01 in the vendor file, okay? Because what ends up happening here is this, is when a vendor is paid and they're coded as 1099 and there's a particular box number, that transaction gets uploaded into the history file and it's, it's coded um, with these 1099 flags, if you will, based on what's in the vendor file at the time of the payment. So simply by going in and changing the vendor file from miscellaneous 07 to NEC 01, that's not going to automatically adjust your history. It simply says from this point on, any new purchases when they're, they're entered and subsequently the checks are printed and it's the batches uh, session is posted, the history record is going to say NEC 01. Okay. So part two to this equation is this. Okay. Uh, so our, our vendor information report um, identifies the who's if we want to get a list. The, the second report that will be helpful in this project is this. Um, if you go up under reports and you come on down to your journals and select your cash journal, Um, in your cash journal, there's, there's this um, 1099 summarized. You can also run it on detailed if you want. Um, I did something similar in this category as well in that I took the summarized report, copied it out to this top report that you see there is the 1099 miscellaneous totals. Okay. And what I'm basically looking to do here is, is you'll notice the date on this particular screen. Um, we, we, uh, I'm running it for the calendar year, okay, 1-1-20 through 12-31-20, okay. I'm going to jump out to the filter tab, and, and this, this is a bit important that you want to see here is um, the source is V for vendor, okay. We're interested in those um, vendors where the, the 1099 flag is yes, because always keep in mind you can have a vendor um, you might be, uh, some purchases are 1099 eligible, others might be a reimbursement of an expense. I don't necessarily want to see those reimbursements. I only want to see at this point payments that were made in calendar 20 that were flagged as 1099 eligible. Okay. 
Um, I also uh, told it in the 1099 type box, I gave it a list that the in command um, compares to in, and I'm basically looking for the miscellaneous 07, comma, the NEC 01s. Okay. And let, let me show you a, a quick up on the screen and tell you why. Is um, This report, again, is it's going to show you the vendors that fit the criteria. So we, we've got these four vendors in, in this test database that are coded as miscellaneous 07. And we can basically see in the disbursement column the total amount of payments. Now, I'm not looking at detail. If you want, you can. But this is the total amount paid to these 1099 miscellaneous 07 vendors for calendar 20 um, that went through to the history file and were coded as 1099 eligible. Okay. And honestly, this is really the report you're looking for. Um, and, and let me just do one other thing here is on the content tab, okay, you'll notice in the lower right I asked for both disbursements as well as 1099 adjustment amounts. Okay. Now, the reason for that is, and again, let me run it and bring it up on the screen, is we've got two numeric columns out at the end of the report. Okay. And not only are we going to change the vendor file from miscellaneous 07, is we need to make a 1099 adjustment that basically is going to take the money away from the miscellaneous 07 and apply it to the NEC 01. Okay. So as we go through this project and we make the adjustments, what, um, what you're going to see is the disbursement column will have a negative amount so that it nets to zero, and the adjustment column is going to have a positive amount that was equal to the disbursements. Okay. So with that, let me show you this. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so let's come over here. Oh, my goodness, I'm getting... Okay, close. All righty. So over here, if I come back to maintain and I come back to vendors, okay, I'm going to pick on this, the, the, our CPA here. Okay, and when I go to the 1099 information tab, the bottom line is this. I want to go from miscellaneous to NEC. I want to put them into the non-employee compensation box. Now, based on that cash journal report that I just ran, this is what I also need to do, is I need to come in here and basically say, history said we paid this, this vendor um, X amount of dollars um, against MI, uh, miscellaneous 07. And this pop-up box that you get is it's just MIP is trying to say, wait a minute, what are you doing using this code? It's, it's basically defunct. Well, in our instance, we, we do need it because um, what we need to basically do here is come in here, and I wrote down that amount. So our, our, our cash journal said this person was paid $22,353.93. Okay. So the first half of the adjustment here is to basically reduce box 7. Okay. Second half of the adjustment is to come in here and basically come in and say, um, I want to reclassify that to box one and basically put in the same amount of money. Okay. But it's, keep in mind what this adjustment grid does is it doesn't add to the event history. It doesn't post to your general ledger. It's simply a grid that allows you to adjust your 1099 totals. Okay. Um, in this instance, of course, we're reclassifying from miscellaneous to NAC. Um, this grid can also be used if something got through to the history file and was either coded as 1099 and should not have been, or vice versa. It was coded as, uh, or vice versa. I got it backwards. But, um, but again, feeds just to the 1099s. Okay. Now, let me show you this. Okay. Let me save that because I've got my two changes. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Okay. I don't have to, but I will close out of the vendor file. Okay. I'm going to come back up under reports and journals, swing over to the cash journal. Okay. I'm going to grab this miscellaneous totals report. 
And again, it remains the same. We got our calendar year. Um, filter again is looking for um, the basically anybody that's yes subject to 1099, and that um, they have any miscellaneous 07 activity or any CO1 activity. Now, this time when I display it to the screen, kind of focus down here in this area with uh, uh, our CPA vendor ID. Okay, you'll notice. Horizontally, the miscellaneous 07, we got a plus in the disbursement and a minus in the adjustment, so we've taken away the money from that category. Um, the 1099 adjustment in the NEC category is what, in fact, will print out um, or load up into the Atrix grid that we use to produce the 1099 forms themselves. So. The, the biggest issue that I, I think we have here is, yes, it's a, it's a fair amount of work that who has the time to do this? Um, unfortunately, the IRS is controlling what we have to do. Um, the, the big drag here is this, is um, the timing. You know, you, you could go in here today and um, run a list of who, who your, your 1099 miscellaneous vendors are and the payments to date so far. Um, what happens is, let's say you, you, you're able to ha you have to find the time to edit half of these, um, and then later in the week a warrant goes through. Be sure to rerun this cash journal because it's, um, you know, again, if you, get, if you get 10, 20, 50 vendors, maybe you can sweep through and get them all at one, one shot. But the likelihood is, is it's going to take a couple iterations. So just be sure that you rerun this cash journal and um, get updated numbers if by chance you've had to run a warrant, um, pay some AP bills or whatnot between the first run of this report and the point that you can get back to and do some of the editing. Okay. So that's, that's the big thing with the 1099s. Um, again, I, I feel awful bad because it's a, a fair amount of work, but um, I'm, I'm glad the software is compliant. I'm not thrilled that we have to do these adjustments, but nevertheless, that's where we stand at this point. Okay. Um, let me also just mention, too, is um, we need, be, before you can start this project, um, we need to schedule the update um, to, to get this software release installed on your system. Okay. Um, I, I've started to contact a few folks to, to get this done. Um, if you would like to reach out to me, and, and my email is Kathy with a K dot Dwyer D W Y E R at Zobrio dot com. Um, either you know, reach out to me in email. Um, I will get back to you. We can schedule a time to get the update done. Um, it's usually, you know, we want everybody to be off the system. It's typically a quick update. Um, I can plan on doing it during the workday, or if, if you prefer, I can do it after 5 um, or after your work hours. But it's, we do need to get the update done. Uh, when it's done, you'll notice not only MIP um, 1099 changes, but there's, there's some uh, enforced security changes as well, which basically means um, it's going to ask you to reset your password, okay? And there's uh, what ends up happening in the system, um, get that drop down out of the way, is here under options and system preferences, my screen, there we go. Um, what ends up happening is that this is a, a, a job that's often very, very infrequently do you look at it, and so, some folks don't even have the permission to look at it. But what ends up happening is this, this is where it talks about minimum password lengths and how many days before a password expires. Um, we can go over that on an update if you'd like, but do know it, it is, after the update, it is going to prompt you for a, a password reset. Um, the defaults are 8 and 90 in case your fields are blank. So that's kind of basically what I was looking to uh, present today. Um, if you have any questions or you um, want to talk to me about any of this, please feel free to send me an email.
Um, I will get back to you. And the reason I say that is I'm working remotely, and it's e- it's easier for me to call you back than um, send have you go through voicemail. Heck, where you dial my office, it says leave me a message. Send me an email. I'll call you back, and it's probably the most efficient way that I can get back in touch with you. Okay, well, again, thank you, everybody, um, for attending. Apologize for our delay. And um, best of luck with this project, and I'm here to help. Thank you, everyone. A recording of this webinar will be made available shortly.